And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. In 2012, Monte Cook did a Kickstarter for an RPG called Numenera, which I don't know much about it, but I know that it takes place in a futuristic slash medieval time period. Well, essentially it takes place a billion years in the future. <laughs> Not a couple thousand, a billion years. So it's a medieval type setting, but there's magic and there's hideous mutated monsters and some technology. You know, it's, it's a new RPG. Well, uh, they partnered together with AEG to make a Thunderstone set. Uh, Thunderstone Advanced Numenera, Monte Cook's Numenera. And this is completely compatible with other Thunderstones, but it's also its own complete game. Now, I'm going to let other people review it as a complete game. I'm a big fan of Thunderstone and Thunderstone Advance, and I have everything for them so far. And so I'm going to look at this one basically as an expansion, as, you know, things that you can add to the game that you already have, and also just a way to look at the cards in the set. So let's see what's included in this box that is different than Thunderstones that come before. First thing we have is the board. This is, it's a two-sided board. You have the dungeon board, which basically the main difference is up here in the ranks. You can see here that the dungeon board has only three ranks and it has darkness one, two, three with a penalty of minus two, minus four, minus six. While on the other side, on the wilderness, on the wilderness board, you have a four rank dungeon, but it's only minus one light for each one. So you can play with either one you want. Both boards work fine. Players can add a setting to the, the game. They don't have to, but I mean, you can do it. It's kind of an optional thing with these large cards. And each card has something you do. In fact, the game comes with a D20 that you'll roll for these cards. Like for example, this one, you roll a D20 at the beginning of each person's turn. I just roll a natural 20. And there, every player in reverse turn order may level up one hero in his or her hand to a different hero. But you still have to spend the experience. Um, but if I roll a 13, each player gets one disease. <laughs> so lots of diseases. So there's different ones here, an amber monolith, the ogaric, the obelisk of the water god, the twisted spire. After you spend or discard HP, uh, XP, the active player rolls a d20. And then we see what happens. So I roll it here and I got a 19. I'm rolling today. Whenever a card would be destroyed by a monster's effect, discard it instead. So that happens for one round. So these are things that you can add to change up to how the game works. The game comes with experience uh, markers, which are placed in this bag. And when you get experience markers, you're going to pull one out. And you'll notice that this is not gray like the original experience marker was. It's different colors and it's like a whole rainbow. It's like fruity pebbles here. Uh, when you draw these experience markers, you can use them as a cipher. Um, and whenever you defeat a monster, you'll draw these randomly from the bag, and you can use one each turn, one cipher each turn. Uh, using a blue one lets you draw a card, a gray one lets you destroy a card, a yellow one adds one to light, you know, it's thematic, adds one to light, a red one adds one to your physical attack, an orange is worth, you know, it's close to gold, it gives you two gold, and the green gives you magic attack. So this is a pretty cool thing, and I would use these even if I wasn't gonna use these ciphers because, hey, it's cool to have different color experience. The deck of cards that you start with in this game is the exact same as the original uh, Thunderstone Advance. So let's take a closer look at some of the village cards that come in this. These are the randomizer cards, but they tell you what they do. Some of them are interesting, some, you know, we'll see. The chemical injector here, this one's an interesting one because you can use it to add, add physical attack of one and a magic attack of plus two to one here against Doom Laden and Doom Knights. That's interesting. This is less effective when you mix it in with everything because the Doom Laden aren't going to show up as often. So it's okay, but it does give you two money and one light, so there's that. A Fear Maker, if you don't defeat... This one's interesting. If you don't defeat a monster, you destroy this card and then you get another whole turn. So that's really interesting of a, a card to play. It also gives you three light. So it kind of gives you two chances, I suppose. And then you can, here you can add physical attack of plus one for each village you're present. They're really trying to get you to use a bunch of mercenaries in one thing. I like the mental scramble, it's kind of random. It's magic attack plus one. Then you can discard four cards from your deck and draw one. So the preparation action that you have isn't very useful with this, but it might work. So there's all sorts of uh, cool things. You got your typical physical attack plus three. Um, let's see here, the phase disruptor, destroy this card and two other cards to draw a card. 
that's uh, why would you use that well you can use it to get rid of diseases um, this one's a really interesting one unstable crystals if you use this card it gives you magic attack plus three but then you get another unstable crystals is added to your your discard pile if you ever have three or more of these in front of you they they all are destroyed and a random card is destroyed too. So you can use these, but they'll start filling up your deck. So it's an interesting thing. It also is worth two gold and one light. So that's, I, I like that. And this is another one I really like, Paired Swords. Uh, it's plus four attack, but when you buy it, you get two copies basically. That's a really neat concept and I wouldn't mind seeing more things like Paired Daggers and Paired whatever. Uh, dart Throw, it's always good to have another bow. Uh, this one's uh, against rank two or higher. Village Jack which he is the jack of all trades in sense. He will let you destroy a card to get two gold or an experience point. Now, I don't know that I would ever use him to get that two gold, but I would certainly do it to get that experience point. Here's a great hammer, great hammer to attack and draw till you have eight cards. Whoa, it's so awesome. Uh, let's see, this guy, I like this one too. The magic energy is equal to the experience point of the monster that you're selected to fight. So that's, you know, at least usually a, a one, but could go all the way up to three. And then every other player discards a card. And this is only four, definitely one that I would buy. Or the punch dagger. You can, each hero can have two of this. So buy a, a pile of these punch daggers and let's and just nail on the other person. And then a better pole arm than the, than the typical one where it's a physical attack of two and adds one for each other pole arm that's present. And then the ray emitter, uh, adding light, and then the shield bearer. I like this guy. When one of your heroes is about to be destroyed, you can destroy this guy instead. Sacrificial lamb and retaliation nodule. Magic attack plus one and magic attack plus one for each hero class. So this rewards you for having a balanced party. Now let's take a look at the heroes. There's a lot of heroes that are included in this set, so we're, you know, we don't want to spend too much time on them, but there's pretty cool. This graceful guy you know, starts a physical attack plus one, and he gets plus two when he fights a monster with the battle effect. Great. And then he goes all the way up to physical attack plus three, and he's immune to battle and aftermath effects. That's what's really cool is the fact that he's immune, and he gets plus five when he fights someone. So he could be an eight when he gets there at the end. Intelligent. When a card's destroyed, he gets attack plus two, all the way up to attack plus four and light two. The Learned Wizard, um, attack plus one, go up to attack plus four, but draws cards. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is that the, some of them are kind of basic, but that's, that makes sense because this is a starter set for a lot of people, so a lot of these people are going to be basic inside here. Clever is a really interesting one. She starts off as just this boring magic attack plus two, but what she changes into a, in level three is she has a magic attack plus five, that's great, or... She can do a physical attack equal to the health of one monster present in your hand. So if you kill a monster whose health is like eight, then she has a physical attack of eight. So think of her as someone who morphs into other creatures. Really cool. Probably my, I don't know if my favorite new character, but certainly one of them. Uh, priests that let you destroy cards. Um, this guy lets you destroy diseases to draw cards with a great magic attack. This rugged. Um, this is one of two creatures, or, or I'm sorry, not creatures, but two characters that come with markers, okay? There's a bunch of markers that come with the game now, and they're in different colors, so that if you play with one of these characters, each player will take the color of that mark. And you can mark a monster, like this guy marks a monster after he goes to the village, he marks a monster. If another player fights that monster, he gets an experience point. That's really a neat uh, ability to have. Um, and as, as time goes by, he gets, he's also very useful. He can take a prepare action anytime someone takes that monster with a bark. So that's great. The Swift, she also can mark monsters and she, gets, she can add health to them, uh, adding health three to any monster that someone else attacks. So not only could she go in and attack her own monster, uh, but she can then, after she goes in and fights that monster, then she can make another monster harder for other players. That's pretty cool. Let's see, Stealthy lets you buy extra cards. Um, the Strong Guy, now he's really interesting. He is physical attack plus three, but he can't level up, and you can't level up into this guy. The only way to level him up is directly after a battle. Discard four to level him up, and then he gets a physical attack plus six, and then it takes six to level him up. And then he has a physical attack plus nine with a strength of eight, which is superbly cool. Uh, but man, you sure use a lot of experience to get him. 
Strong willed, goes up, everyone else will discard cards, another one to get after other people. Uh, tough character, lets you uh, buy a weapon after the battle's over. When he goes up to level three, he can put the top card of any hero stack into your discard pile. Really, really cool. Um, and the Mystic is a physical attack plus one or a magic attack plus one. And then he can change his physical attack to magic attack, which is pretty neat. All right, we're going to take a look at a smattering of all the monsters. The monsters in this one are very, you know, creepy. And that's, I guess, a billion years in the future. We'll do that for you. This is a hilarious. It's a war moth. Who would use a war moth? But it's doom laid in here, and it's good money and light if you kill it. But why would you, you know, what does a doom laden mean? Well, there's many other creatures that have doom laden, like this guy here. If a doom laden is present in your hand, place it on the bottom of the dungeon deck. Uh, here, if the global effect, if a Doom Laden is present, you must select a Terror Bird to fight. So you have to fight a Terror Bird if there's a, a Doom Laden present. If a Doom Laden is present in your hand, you get two diseases when you fight this guy. If this guy is destroys a Wizard or a Cleric, he will do it twice if you're Doom Laden. This guy will destroy a Thief twice. This guy will destroy a Mercenary Level 1 Hero twice. Um, so there, the, there's things that affect the Doom Laden. Then there's each of the monsters in this uh, expansion has like their, their set has like their, their theme to them. Like these guys are, uh, one is immune to magic attacks like this guy. Um, this, there's some that, you know, work with diseases that give you disease after the battle. If a weapon's equipped, get a disease. And then you get another disease. This guy destroys a weapon. Uh, destroy all items, weapons, and spells with abilities you've used. So you gotta be careful when you attack her. Uh, this one, you must use all your dungeon abilities, even if you don't want to. Uh, you cannot defeat this card with 10 or higher, which is, it's, this is really interesting. I, there, this is from the ultra terrestrial attacks. I call them like the math set because you can't defeat this card unless you have exactly eight total attack value. Um, so that's just interesting. Um, here you can't fight this one if there's darkness at all. There's a lot of monsters or this one, draw a card for each point of light presence. Um, this one's immune to magic attack or physical attack, whichever one's higher. This one's immune to magic attack or physical attack, whichever one is lower. Destroy a hero, destroy a weapon. So, and I mean, that's just a nasty looking monster too. Um, so this is kind of just some examples. Here's the Thunderstone Bearers, the really powerful guys you have to fight at the end. I believe there's three Thunderstone Bearers, yeah. This guy has a head of light, which is kind of gross. And he ignores heroes a level two and lower. Crazy, crazy. You know, if I could only get one Thunderstone, I'd be tempted to get this over Thunderstone Advance. If only because I like the settings a lot. I really like those settings. I wish there was more. And I love the experience counters and how they can be used for other things and the different colors. And uh, there, there's a, and I, I thought the monsters were better themed than this one than previous. Now, the setting itself is okay. You know, I've seen a, a lot of mix of techno, mutated, uh, medieval time settings before. Final Fantasy comes to mind. Um, but... But it, it was good, and the artwork is phenomenal, as, as always, and I think it's balanced. It's not like, oh, these cards are better than the other ones. No, but they're different, and they add a lot. I didn't see anything in here that duplicated original stuff, and I think people who, this is your first game, you'll be like, ooh, I can get a fireball, I can get this and add it to my set. So that's cool. As an expansion for Thunderstone Advance, you're going to be just like gog. There's so much to add from this set. Tons of cards. Um, tons of things. Uh, those marker abilities are cool. Now, the only thing about those marker abilities is they add a ton of tokens. Because, you know, you could have five players, and so there's colors for each player uh, that for just two, two heroes. But still. Uh, I mentioned some of the stuff I really liked. I like the paired swords. I like the monsters that have cool effects. Um, the doom laden monsters. I think those are a neat idea. And they and there's and they're still being able to work with the me mechanisms for this and continually to do cool things with them. I mean, Thunderstone at this point now has longer legs than Dominion does, and it doesn't seem to have any slowdown in sight. So I'm pretty excited about this. This is a great expansion. I was a little concerned at first when I heard about this Numenera, like are you, you're moving out of fantasy into some other world, but they mesh together pretty well. So major thumbs up for me, Thunderstone Numenera. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door now.
Boom.